this is Jen from That's La Plan and I'm coming with you for another new video all about the do's and don'ts of planning self-drive ski holidays and top tips for taking your family on long road trips. So Mr. T is driving the car and we got Odin in the background there and Phoenix is behind me but you can't see Phoenix but he's back I'm there. Picking my nose. And he's not picking his nose. And I am picking my and he is picking his nose. All right, but they're going to be nice and quiet now while I record this and tell you everything you need to think about before you drive to the Alps for your next family ski holiday. So first things first, <laughs> is it worth taking your family in the car on the way to your ski holiday? Um, there's lots of pros and cons to weigh up and we'll go through a lot of them on this video. But in a nutshell, yeah, it can be worth it. With the rising costs of living and fuel and flight prices, as well as kind of short staff uh, in airports and the queues and things to do passport control, taking your car to the mountains can actually be a really good option that you can actually arrive a lot quicker, which might be, seem crazy, but you can actually get to your ski resort faster than flying. Um, but also if you have got young children, it is much more comfortable and convenient to sit in your car, load up with all your gear and just go from A to B without all the long airport queues and lines and transfers and things like that. It can also end up saving you some money, which we'll touch on as well, how to keep to a budget. So have a listen. Let me know what you think and any questions or queries, hit me up in the comments. And if you're finding this video useful, like and subscribe and keep following me from That's the Plan. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to mention for driving to your family ski holiday is winter car safety. So first things first, if you can take your car for a service, a full service, um, you will just have the peace of mind if not catch anything that might be due to break uh, before you are halfway through France or Austria or wherever it is you're heading. Um, and it will just make sure that you are ready to go and you won't get stuck uh, on the roadside somewhere in the middle of uh, a foreign country. Um, so the next things I want to talk about are uh, snow chains. Definitely get some snow chains for your car. It's actually mandatory if you are driving in France in the winter uh, mountains that you have snow chains. Be aware that all cars need different sizes and models for the tyre size of your car. So do make sure you're buying the correct ones. And I would always recommend winter chains over snow socks. While snow socks might be cheaper, for your car they really aren't very good so if you do get caught in snowy bad weather they just aren't really going to help you out very much at all if you do get the chance practice putting them on because there is a knack to it and i even i struggle with it and i've lived in the mountains for nearly 20 years um so do practice putting them on you don't want the first time you put your chains on to be in a blizzard at 2000 meters up a mountain so check it out if you can and my top tip for chains would be always keep a pair of gloves to one side with your chains so that you can because your fingers will go numb from putting on your chains in the middle of the snow when you do pack them away, make sure they are completely dry um, and clean before you do pack them away again. Otherwise, the next time you go to use them, you'll find that they've rusted and broken. Am I speaking from experience? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, so that's winter car safety and chains. Um, the next thing you've got to think about is how you're actually going to cross over from the UK into Europe. Is it going to be the tunnel or is it going to be the ferry? Having done both, I have to say I'm a big fan of the Channel Tunnel and it seems to be the most popular method when I ask around in different forums and Facebook groups. People are really keen on taking the ferry and the main reasons for this is it's a lot faster. The check-in process and the crossing itself is a lot quicker. You do stay in your car so you don't have to get out, move around the ferry and you know you don't end up spending lots of extra money on the ferry. You just uh, uh, in, On the Channel Tunnel you just sit in your car and it's much easier. Your kids will be disappointed that they can't see fish and uh, animals swimming around in the ocean uh, out of the windows and um, so do be prepared for that one and explain how the tunnel works <laughs> don't get caught out um, and there are basically with the channel tunnel there are just a lot more crossings um, so it is easier to kind of pick a time slot that suits you um, one thing that I hear from lots and lots of people is to check out Tesco club card vouchers because you can redeem them for channel tunnel crossings so for every one pound you spend in Tesco 
sorry, every hundred pounds you spend in Tesco, you get a one pound club card voucher. And the rate recently was five pounds worth of club card vouchers got you 15 pounds of credit with Euro Tunnel. So you can end up getting very reasonably priced tunnels crossings. Um, the other thing that we always do is drive late at night because it gives us the option of picking off peak uh, channel tunnel crossings, which again saves you some extra money um, if you're trying to keep it to a budget. So that would be another thing I would check out. Um, kind of on the same topic, the thing I would also suggest or think about is do look at driving through the night. So our children now are six and four, but ever since they were tiny, I mean, the first time we drove through from the UK to La Plan, Odin was only five or six months old. And um, he, we drive through the night and he slept through the night. I mean, we got him up to so I could feed him and nappy change him and get him out of his car seat every now and then. But the actual journey was dark and he slept through the night, which means less having to entertain your children for you and also less meltdowns in the car uh, from them. Uh, so that's something to look at. You do need to think about your confidence and how comfortable you are. One, driving in a foreign country, but also two, driving at night. All right, Odin, we can see you. <laughs> um, so do just think about that. But we would often get a tunnel crossing around midnight and then drive through the night, arriving into kind of Alberville about 7.30 a.m. to stop for breakfast, meaning that we could get up into La Plan or whatever your ski resort is, but kind of nice and early in the morning. Um, which can be really good timing and it means you miss a lot of the traffic that can be on the roads on the peak travel days so that is something to think about um, and that leads me on to my next point um, driving to your ski holiday means that you do or you can avoid the busy peak season transfer days so if you are looking at flying and booking ski transfers you might be really shocked at the price of transfers booking a private transfer bus for like eight people or an eight seater minibus even if it's only a family of four it's going to cost you somewhere in the region of 800 to a grand uh, euros so it is getting more and more expensive but of course it is because the cost of fuel is incredibly expensive um, so if you are self-driving you can kind of avoid that cost spend it on your own fuel and your own car and you can then time your journey to avoid those crazy peak rush hours so for those of you that don't know the main transfer day in the mountains uh, are weekends but much more heavily on a Saturday so the roads arriving into ski resorts become very very busy between midday to about 5 or 6 p.m in the afternoon and on your departure the roads are going to be really busy anywhere from 5 a.m through till about lunchtime so if you are driving yourself you can choose to drive outside of those times and it might mean that, that you get to the airport or sorry not the airport it might mean that you get onto the road much earlier than you were planning but you could always enjoy the scenic route and uh, have a look at something on the way home or just stop for a nice lunch somewhere en route and you will just be your peace of mind will be much better because you aren't sat in traffic which is very stressful isn't it when you're just not moving anywhere um, the other thing was if you're not uh, if you can book your holiday on, from a Sunday so if you can just completely avoid the Saturday traffic I would 100% recommend it the tour operator that I used to work for had their transfer days and their holidays went from week to week Sunday to Sunday and we would often listen to the um, nightmares of the Saturday transfers from the other club holidays that we're doing a Saturday to Saturday transfer and then on a Sunday ours would just go like clockwork no problems so I would always recommend if you can find a holiday that goes Sunday to Sunday go for it um, it does mean when you get back home on the other side you arrive home on the Sunday and then it's back to work or school on the Monday so that end of it is something to think about but from a traffic point of view Sunday to Sunday is a really good shout um, so the next thing, if you are driving um, through France, then something to look at is the toll roads and the tag, the vehicle tag options. So if you're in a, we're in a UK car, so I'm sat in the passenger seat here, um, but it's the wrong way around for France. And um, as we go through toll roads, 
I'm the one who would have to open the window and pay for the, the, the tolls as we go through or scan my card to pay as we go through. Um, which if you're driving through the night and your passenger is sleeping, which is what we would normally do, then it's really inconvenient for your passenger. So we always get these uh, tags, these electric tags, and you can order them online. I'll add a link in the comments below. Um, the tag is called a Liberty tag, and it costs you something like one euro 70 a month for the month that you use it, and then it's free for the months that you don't use it. It's attached to your bank card and you get billed for the tolls that you've gone through at the end of the month. The money will just be debited out of your account. And basically you have this little tag, you stick it up. We've got ours just above the wind. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but just above the mirror here. And then as you drive through the toll booth, you slow down and it scans as you go through. So you don't have to open the window, your driver can do it and your passenger can stay asleep. It's a really great option. And as you drive through the toll roads, the um, the lanes for these um, tag tickets are bright orange with a T, a black T in them. And you'll see all the local cars using those. That is really, I think is a great thing that we got. And we, uh, all the locals use it just for their daily trips. But if you're driving through France for a ski holiday, I'd totally recommend it. It can be with you within 48 hours of you ordering it online. So definitely check it out. Um, the other thing I should just mention on the toll roads is they can add a lot to your ski budget. So if you are trying to do the journey on a budget, um, you might want to consider avoiding the toll roads, but do be aware that when we've done that, because we've tried both options, it's added five to six hours to our journey. Um, so you might save yourself some money on the tolls, but you're going to end up spending more on fuel and it is going to take you a lot longer either to get to resort or to get home. Um, for us, the toll roads, when we drive through France, probably set us back, how much do you reckon? Uh, about 80 euros each way when we go uh, from Calais through to La Plan on the toll roads. So again, it's up to you which decision you take. We often just take the toll roads because we drive through the night, we get our heads down and we just want to get into resort as soon as possible. Um, so again, self-drive ski holidays, let's have a think um, about the fact that you can arrive a lot earlier into your ski resort. So in theory, this sounds excellent because you get an extra day of your ski holiday. Um, but some things to think about and to consider is your accommodation check-in times. So a lot of ski accommodations are not going to be available for you until four in the afternoon or five in the afternoon. And this is because the housekeeping staff are turning the accommodations over from the previous in, uh, people who were on holiday. So of course, it's always worth checking if you can get an early arrival, but it's not always likely. So whilst you might arrive into your ski resort at 10 in the morning, you might not actually be able to get your accommodation until until much later in the afternoon. So check with your accommodation if you can get an early arrival. Check with them and see if you can drop equipment off because if you can, you can always go and sort out your ski hire and bits and pieces and drop them at the chalet. Um, a really great thing that's available in La Plan is with some lift passes, you get an, a free half a day of skiing on your arrival day. So if you have booked your lift passes to start from your first full day on the Sunday, you might find you've got a free half a day pass on the Saturday. So I'll put more information about that in the comments, but that can be really fun. You can arrive kind of early morning, get yourself some uh, a nice like late lunch, uh, sorry, late breakfast or early lunch, and then head out for a little ski to get your ski legs back ready before that first day. So check that one out. Um, if you are also bringing your own car to resort, do have a look at your parking options. Um, as with most ski resorts, space in La Plan is an absolute premium. And what we've seen over the last few years is a lot of car parks disappearing as they've built new accommodations or new services. And what it means is parking is hotly sought after. So my first top tip would be check with your accommodation provider because they've usually got um, parking spaces tied to their accommodation and that might be included in your holiday or you might need to rent it and pay a little bit extra. So that's the first option. The second thing is to have a look or ask if there's free parking around your accommodation because there is a lot of free parking along the roads in La Plan, but availability, you know, it's not guaranteed. 
and then the third option is the underground car parking spaces and these are paid for and are usually about 70 euros for a week but it does mean your car is uh, underground it means if it does snow you don't have to worry about snow clearing it's a little bit more secure and if you've booked it in advance then it's a guaranteed parking spot for you but again if you're trying to keep things to a budget it might be a bit uh, too expensive for what you're looking at so have a look at those options um, if you're heading to another ski resort not La Plan and I, d I don't know that much about the parking in the other resorts I would suggest um, finding the local Facebook groups for those ski areas um, or jump onto the Snowheads forum and just ask in there there's always super helpful people who can point you in the right direction and tell you how much it's going to cost you roughly uh, right moving on so if you are self-driving to your ski holiday one thing that you should do is do organize your lift passes in ahead of your arrival. So if you're coming to La Plan, you can jump online and you can order your lift passes online. So there's a couple of things that you can do with this. If you've got old lift passes from last year, then you can grab the reference number on your La Plan lift pass and it starts with the letters WTP, semicolon, and then there'll be a reference number. If you have those reference numbers and those lift passes, then you can recharge your lift passes from last year, which is amazing because it will just trigger the pass to start on your on the first day that you've ordered your passes from. So you don't have to do anything else. You can order them and pay online and they are good to go. So just remember to pack them and take them with you. Um, if you don't have uh, old lift passes from La Plan, then you can order them online still, but you will still need to go to one of the lift pass offices and um, pick them up from a kiosk there. It looks like a bank uh, cash point. So you do still need to go and visit the lift pass office to do that. I'll add some information in the comment for you about that. Um, there are lots of questions you need to think about for lift passes. Too much to go through here. You will find one of my other videos is solely dedicated to lift passes because you need to think about things like uh, the age and the ability of your skiers, the breakdown of uh, um, family groups or duo or, or trio passes, uh, lots of things to think about. So again, check out my other video and resources about the lift pass prices and it will help you make the right decision for your family. Um, the next thing that is really a good idea to think about if you are doing a self-drive family ski holiday is do think about your food shopping. So in all ski resorts, including La Plan, you do have little supermarkets and mini markets. It's usually a spa supermarket or a Sherpa supermarket. And you will be able to pick up everything that you need for your week's holiday from the supermarket. But do be aware that you are gonna pay a lot more for your items than you would from a SuperU or a bigger Géant e Leclerc supermarket. We call it a mountain tax living in the mountains okay. and everything is just it's just more expensive so if you can stop on route and do a big shop at the foot of the valley um, and fill up your car and bring up the basics and you can pick up your specialty things once you're getting to resort if you're feeling really organized you can also organize a click and collect so there is a big super use supermarket in Borg San Maurice um, in the Tarantes Valley and you can organize a click and collect and pick up all your shopping from there so you don't actually have to go into the supermarket and do all the shopping so that's something to think about um, and that is it. Those are all my do's and don'ts of bringing your family on a self-drive ski holiday, and which is perfect because we've just arrived at our destination. So I hope you've enjoyed that. There's about 20 to 30 tips and do's and don'ts in there. And if you've got any questions about any of them, drop me a message in the comments and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, um, check out my site. There's a lot more in-depth detail and resources that you might enjoy having a look through. So that's been Jen from That's La Plan. Follow me if you've enjoyed this video. And if you've got any improvements or things you'd like to hear more about, just request the topics in the comments and I will sort it out for you. Take care and I will see you on the slopes. And that's La Plan.